Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Next time you have guests, try serving this famous original malted milk for supper. Horlicks is especially suitable for summer parties. Cool, refreshing, energy-giving, easy to make. It has every quality that you could desire. It's especially good to drink, too, and goes well with anything else that you choose to serve. If you've never tried Horlicks, listen to how simple it is to prepare. All you have to do is to mix the powder thoroughly with either water or milk and set it in the refrigerator to get really cold. That's all there is to it. And by the way, you can do the mixing with an ordinary egg beater if you like. Get a package of Horlicks from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. You'll find many other uses for it, too. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. You know, for the past few days, Lum has been employed as delivery boy at the Jot'em Down store. Abner, who is sole owner of the store now, has been making life very miserable for the old fellow. So yesterday, having reached the end of his patience, Lum suddenly quit Abner to join forces with their former enemy, Squire Skimp. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum over at his home, just resting. Listen. Come in, come in. Well, I did it. Come right in. Well, I was afraid you wasn't here long. I had the front door closed and the stage all gone. Yeah, I keep the house shut up this time of day. It makes it cooler. Yeah, well, it still helps today. I just noticed the thermometer on the front porch the store there. at 96 in the shade. Yeah, I tried to take a nap out there on the front door a while ago, but the sun worked around the where it did me in. Sit down, Dick. Go off that chair. Yeah, yeah, well, I can't stay but a minute. I'll just come over to talk to you about that. About that. Yeah, he was telling me he came over here to see you this morning. You ran him off the place. Yeah, and the next time I'll check the dog on you. Well, he feels awful bad about the way he treated you while you were working for him down there at the store line. He feels bad about it. How do you think I feel? Well, he knows now that he was wrong about it. You see, he was afraid when you went to work down there for him that you'd try to take charge and run things like you always did, so he just started in to let you know who was boss. Yeah, that's what he said. I know why he treated me that way. Seen I was down and out and couldn't find a job no place else, so he taken a delight and making it just as hard for me as he could. Showing out, he embarrassed me in front of my friends. Well, there's no doubt about what he cares things too far. But I'm not upholding him. But he wanted me to come over and explain to you just why he acted that way. No, sir. He just showed me what kind of a man he is. He's a different man when he gets a little tardy. Abner's a hard man. Well, now, he didn't intend to keep that up long. He had it all planned yesterday afternoon when you came in there with Squire. He was going to ball you out like he was mad and then tell you it was all a joke. He was even going to take you home with him for supper last night. But, of course, you quit and stomped out before he had a chance to tell you. Yeah, he's just saying that to get me to come back to work for him. I wouldn't believe him on oath. Ain't a thing to him. A fellow that'll be your friend till you need him and then turn again you, ain't a thing in the world to him. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way about it, Lum, because I know what Abner hates it. Well, I appreciate you coming over, Dick, and all that, but there ain't no use for you to try to patch things up with me and Abner. I'm through with him. Just glad I found him out. Well, I've done all I can. I told him I'd come over and talk with you, Lum. Yeah, well, I appreciate your interest, Dick. Trouble with you is you just don't know him like I do. Well, now, I've known Abner quite a while, Lum. <laughs> you just think you know him, though. I thought I did. Been partners with him for years. Thought I knowed him like a book. Best way to get acquainted with that gentleman is to work for him once. He's a jeeper and hides, that's what he is. A snake and wolf club, I mean, in the weeds. Uh, yeah. Well, tell you the truth, Mom. I don't see how Abner's going to get along over there in that store without you. He's way too high on some stuff, and other items he's got marked down below cost. Losing money every time he makes a sale. I don't know what I was doing. Come in, come in. What are you doing back over here? Well, Mom, I just want to talk to I you. told you to stay away from over here. Now get out. Just stay off of my premises. Well, Mom, if you'll just listen. You don't get out of here, I'm going to set the dog on you. Here, lead. Here, lead. <laughs> hey, Granny, that got shut up. Hey, she ought to be ashamed of yourself, Mom, sticking the dog on you. Oh, lead ain't even here. <laughs> he went fishing with the Macmillan boys this morning, but he don't know it. I mean, Abner, no. How fun if you fellas are not a pair. <laughs> Wait, I want to raise a blind over here and see where he's at. <laughs> well, for the land sake, he's still running. <laughs> so I'm looking at it. I'll get even with him yet, don't you worry. Well, I'm just afraid he's fixing to lose everything he's got over in that store. Now, he doesn't know anything about buying or selling either one. And he's letting anybody have stuff on credit that asked for it. 
Well, I don't wish him no bad luck, but if he does go broke, I'd love to give him a job. <laughs> but I wouldn't fix him. He's glad I found something else to do. That's what yeah, I mean. By the way, what kind of job is this you got with Squire anyway, now? Well, to be honest, Dick, I don't hardly know myself. Now, how come you to get strung in with him? Oh, I don't know. I just met him down the road there, you see. He seen me carrying a sack of feed over to Luther Phillips' place, and I got to tell him how Abner was treating me down there at the store. Made Squire awful mad when he heard it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that Squire ain't such a bad fellow after all, day. Yeah, I thought he was an enemy of mine. Turns out to be one of the best friends of God. Appeared to take off on him, trust my troubles. This shows a fellow never knows his real friends as he gets down and out, you know. I had some awful nice things to say about me. Well, I hope it's something that you'll make some money out of, huh? Oh, well, Squire says it's the biggest proposition you ever hit on me. That's what he says about it. Yeah. I think he just let me in on it through kindness. Knows I've had a hard run of luck here lately. He says it'll make us both rich. Well, I'd be careful what I went into with Squire skin. You know, his reputation's not any too good around this town. Oh, well, don't you worry about me going into anything I wasn't to. He's coming over here today to explain the proposition to me. Went into the county seat this morning to get some printing done. Said he'd be back this afternoon sometime. Went in to have some printing done. Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> I can't hardly wait to hear all about it. Get started at it. I just wonder what it is he's got in mind. Well, he never said, and of course it wasn't my place to ask him. Something good, though, I bound you. Well, it doesn't sound like Squire Skimp to be giving anybody anything wrong. I wouldn't let him fool me with that friendship stuff. You know, it hadn't been over a couple of weeks ago that he was suing you for damages. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that some. You see, he ain't mad at me because he lost the case. He said he weren't. And here just a few days ago, while you were suspecting him of being the one that set fire and burned down your picture show. Yeah, I'm kind of shaming myself over that, too. I sort of brung it up in a roundabout way yesterday. He, he admitted that he was out of town the day it happened, so it couldn't have been him. Well, I don't want to try to run your business for you, but just remember now, he was threatening to get even with you for closing up that picture show of his. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we had a big laugh over that yesterday. It's that funny. After all the fussing and wrangling we've did, for us to turn out to be partners and such good friends all of a sudden. <laughs> just goes to show it's a small world after all. Here today and gone tomorrow. Uh, yeah. Well, his proposition may be all right. I don't know. I hope it is. But investigate it thoroughly before you go into it. Like. Oh, well, you know me, Dick. I never jump head foremost into nothing. Looking before you do any leaping is one of my old editors' sayings. I'll study his proposition over carefully, weigh it, uh, turn it over in my mind, and look at it from all four sides. If it sounds good to me, I'll go in with it. If it don't, I'll just tell him that I won't take no part in it. That is, if I can do it without hurting his feelings. Well, I wouldn't hesitate about telling if I didn't want to go into it with him. No, no, no. I always believe in the fellow knowing where he's going before he goes. Like if I was going into the county seat, I'd want to know where it was at before I went. Uh, well, <laughs> that's a rough idea. Well, uh, you can't be too careful with a fellow like him, Lum, I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, right. don't you work... Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Granny there's Abner back at the door again, I bound you. If I don't give him a good scare, and, and just keep right on talking, Dick, while I slip through the door. To <laughs> what you going to do, Lum? <laughs> What are you doing back over here? I thought I told... Oh, uh, excuse me, Spy. Uh, I thought you were somebody else. Yes, you like to scare the daylights out of me, Lum, jumping out there at me that way. Well, I'm sorry, for Squire. Come right in. Yes, yes, thank you, Lum. Well, howdy, Dick. How are you, Squire? Well, just fine, just fine. Hot today. Yeah, it is awful warm. Hey, sit down, Squire. Yeah, here, take my chair, Squire. I've got to be running along anyway. No, sit down, Dick. Now, there's plenty of No, 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 you got that rock over business, there. Lum. That's all right. You go right ahead. I'll see you later, Lum. All right, Dick. Glad you come over. Come back again. Yeah, thanks. So long. So long. <laughs> well, Squire, I've had the fidgets all day just busting to find out what this proposition is you've got studied up. Now, well, it's a dandy. I'll tell you that, Lum. Well. In all my business experience, I've never run across anything with the possibilities of this has. Yeah. We're both going to be rich as bottom line. Well, good. Tell me about it. I just don't know how to thank you for letting me in on a deal like that. Well, I studied over Lum, trying to decide who was the right man to get in with me. And I finally picked you. Yeah, natural. You know, I've sold a lot of stock in different enterprises here in Pine Ridge, mm. and... Uh, well, some of them haven't panned out like I thought they would, and some of our good citizens have lost a little money on the deal. Yeah, I know that's right. Well, and some of them have got to wear their little jubers about anything that I've got to offer. Yeah, they Now, that's the reason I picked you. 
I knew you was a man that the old had confidence in. And I knew you'd want to help him if you could. Oh, yeah. yeah. If it's something I can help my friends in, I think I'd be interested. Well, you'll make every one of them rich right along with yourself, huh? Well, what is it, Squire? <laughs> Naturally, I want to know what it is before I go into it. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, first, Lum, uh, let me show you what I had printed up today. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. That's what I went to the county seat for. Well, that granny's that's pretty, ain't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Looks like a diploma, don't it? Oh, you got an eagle holding them flags and them wires in his feet there? Is that a, just a chicken hole? No, no, that's an eagle, all right, now. But that isn't what I want to show you. Uh, look right down there in that right-hand corner. There, look there. Lum Edwards, president. President? You mean I'm president of the company? Yeah, <laughs> that's a little surprise I had for you, Lum. Hey, grannies, I'll take it. You don't need to go no further. I can see already you've got good business. <laughs> Lum Edwards, president. Of what? And now, I'd like to introduce two Lum and Abner fans. If you play and enjoy any sport, tennis, golfing, hiking, motoring, you'll certainly enjoy Horlick's tablets, too. Sportsmen everywhere use Horlick's tablets for satisfying hunger and for supplying extra energy. Mr. Judson, you use Horlick's tablets for golf, I believe. That's right, Mr. Beckett. And say, they sure give me energy for vigorous strokes. I can certainly recommend Horlick's tablets for anyone who plays golf. They satisfy that hungry feeling and help keep you refreshed, too. And you, Mrs. Green, you play a lot of tennis, I believe. Yes, I do, Mr. Beckett. I like Hornick's tablets because they prevent me from tiring too readily. And they're so convenient to carry. That's quite important to a woman, you know. Yes, no doubt it is, Mrs. Green. You buy the ten-cent flask, I suppose? Yes, that's right. But we buy the larger sizes, too, for family use. For golf and tennis, and for all other kinds of outdoor activities, Hornick's tablets are becoming increasingly popular. Try them yourself. You can get them, you know, at your dealers in either natural or chocolate flavor. In handy 10-cent flasks. And in larger sizes, too. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all goodbye until Monday at the same time.